Hey guys, welcome to Everyday Guitarist. What are we doing with Everyday Gear? For Everyday Guitarists, today we're talking about the Balaguerra Spada. First of all guys, thanks for watching. I would really appreciate it if you would hit the subscribe button uh, so I can continue to do these. I love getting gear and de doing demos like this. So I really appreciate it if uh, you'd hit the like button and share this and do the whole thing that all the other millions of YouTubers ask you to do. <laughs> As always, in everyday guitarist, I use $7,000 gear to use the Balagara Spada. I use my Rev Generator 740, a uh, bunch of pedals, all under $1,000 clearly. Uh, Rockaway Archer, ODR1, DOD Rubberneck, a couple other things. Just whatever kind of felt right at the time. <laughs> Today we're talking about this guy right here, the Balaguer Espada. Now, I ordered this probably going on about six months ago now. Uh, it is, first of all, amazing looking. Pink with the Taurus shell pick guard, ebony fretboard, uh, 16 inch radius, two of their feral humbuckers with coil split. Uh, it does a whole bunch of really cool things. It sounds really good, it feels really good. So let's start with the couple of negatives first. So first of all, uh, if I'm being honest, uh, there was some weird stuff going on with shipping and whatnot. It was supposed to be shipped in September, it ended up not being shipped until December, which is fine. It all worked out okay. And I mean, at $6.99, a Chinese beta guitar with all these specs is great. Uh, but the, the, that's the first thing is it took a long time to ship. To be fair, it's the first one. I'm sure they're still figuring stuff out and that's okay. Uh, but just be aware that you might end up having some similar issues if you were to purchase this uh, this guitar. The fretwork is okay. They don't feel awful. Uh, it's not grimy or anything. They're polished okay. They feel pretty good. But the fret ends are pretty sharp. They, uh, I don't know if you can really see. I don't know if you can see it super well, but they're not, they're not great. Uh, they're not awful. They're not the worst frets I've ever touched, but I mean, at seven, eight hundred dollars with shipping, I mean, I, I would expect the, the frets to not be sharp. That's all. Um, that's my biggest issue with it, honestly. And then if you're a real picky person, there's some uh, paint issues just randomly here. You can see in the, where the bolts hold the neck on. There is a minor flaw in the neck where the neck meets the, the, the maple. Uh, other than that, I think it's fine. Uh, now the good things, because there's a lot more good things than bad things. First of all, graph tech tuners, locking tuners, ebony fretboard, 16 inch radius. The humbuckers with the split are fantastic. I love these pickups actually. Uh, they're their own custom wound thing, but they sound great. Uh, they're really open sounding and they sound awesome. I really like them a lot. Um, all their body uh, with maple neck, ebony fretboard, which is cool, you don't see that super often, graph tech nut. So basically it's American parts in a Chinese built guitar. Uh, so it feels really good. It's the Jazzmaster kind of offset thing. It has this awesome cutaway here for high fret access. It feels really good for that. And it's just genuinely a really uh, good guitar. Uh, you know, at, at this price point, um, I mean, you can get Mexican Fenders, you can get the higher end Epiphone stuff, reference stuff, all that kind of thing. Uh, 
The neck is a pretty comfy C shape. It's got a satin neck on it, which I love. It feels really good uh, on the back. I would say it's, they say it's a C. It feels more like a slight D to me. That's just my opinion. I also am crazy, so. It really excels at those super tight, chuggy kind of riff things like pop punk, rock and roll, but it's super versatile. I mean, it does the bluesy thing super well too. Uh, I'm a really big fan of it for that. For Mostly I'm really a big fan of how versatile this guitar is. You, you, you pick it up, and I mean it's pink, whatever. But like, you kind of expect this to be the super rock and roll metal machine. And it is, and you can do that, you know, shreddy thing. But it also is really good at blues stuff because you have that coil tap on there. It does all sorts of really, really cool things and it feels great doing it. Past the negative, if you look past a couple of the negatives, which are fixable, I mean, fret being sharp is something you can take to any good tech and they can fix that for you. I'm not saying you should have to do that, uh, but you can. You know, you spend an extra 50 bucks or 100 bucks, they'll, they'll fix it for you. You know, uh, past all those really slight negatives, in my opinion, it's a really great feeling, great playing, great sounding guitar, especially if you're in the market for something that's kind of versatile and has a hardtail bridge instead of the normal Jazz Master bridge, but still has that kind of offset shape and really is just a true rock and roll machine. Uh, and I mean, it's, it's pink, guys. You can't be mad about it being pink. It looks so good. So if you're looking for a really good looking, fun, versatile guitar in the offset shape, uh, without some of the traditional jazz master issues, I think this is a fantastic choice. So check it out, the uh, Balaguer Espada. Once again, guys, thanks for watching. Really appreciate it. Love doing these. Uh, keep an eye out. I'm gonna have a whole bunch more demos coming out soon. I have my Daybreak Kelly coming out and a couple of other things. So check it out and thanks for watching.